Hello, my name is Dietmar Müller, and I'm going to show you a quick overview of the IQ Analyzer version 5. With version 5, the software now supports video cameras that can be connected to the computer using a USB interface, a Firewire interface, or even broadcast cameras can be connected using Multibridge Pro by Blackmagic. We also support video files, so I select video file here and open the file that I want to be analyzed, and then I can simply play that video or drag this slider along and capture images at these certain areas. How do I do that? I basically go to whatever image I want to capture and add a so-called trigger to this trigger batch list. And then I go to the next chart that I have captured in that video. There we go. And I add another trigger and so on and so forth. Go to the next chart. And there we go. Add another trigger. And then I can select how many frames I want to be captured. Um, those single frame in this demo should do. And I simply press the capture button. And now the software automatically grabs single frames out of these out of this video file and adds these single frames to that list here. So you see the bar on the top here and that tells you um, about the progress of uh, the current activity. So you see the software adds these images into that captured frames list here and after that I can basically select for each of these frames to which module it shall be transferred for further analysis. For example, let's take the OECF one here and pass this on to, to the OECF module. I have to wait for the third one to be completed. There we go. And then I simply press the pass button. And now this is passed on to the OECF analysis. OECF stands for optoelectronic conversion function. Um, what I do in all of these image quality modules is I first select the layout file for that target. So it basically tells the software where are the different patches, the different area that need to be analyzed. Then we also have a reference file for most of the targets um, that tells the software what density values, what luminance values the different patches have or color values in, uh, when it comes to the color analysis. Then we have this queue down here where we add all these files for the analysis and um, there's where our file from the video screen uh, went to. So let me delete that here and work with this file that I've already analyzed. And this is what you see here. So that is the optoelectronic conversion function. Uh, so how the luminance values are transferred into digital values. Looking at the original image, this is the one that has already marked um, regions of interest that have been analyzed by the software. And these regions of interest led to this analysis here. And you see the, the image has a slight green color cast, so green is slightly higher than red and blue. And from this, this curve, a lot of things can be derived, like the dynamic range, white balance, accuracy, um, the ISO speed values that can be calculated. And from the signal to noise ratio of the patches, you can also um, get information here. Uh, and you also can get information on the visual noise. So this can be done on single frames from a video file. It can be done on JPEG or TIFF images. You can also use raw images. So you can select this overlay here. Um, and we basically use DC raw in the background made by Dave Coffin, which supports most of the current um, SLR cameras and high-end compact cameras on the market. And it converts the raw images into TIFF files or whatever you want to use or you need for further analysis. In addition to that, we also support metadata. So metadata is automatically read from the image, but we also 
are able to add additional data like operator name, laboratory name, capture distance for certain um, targets and also notes. And these, this information will be written into the uh, final text files that are provided with each of the analysis. So besides the optoelectronic conversion function, we also have the color analysis that um, tells people how further how far away you are from the from the reference colors. So go into the visual comparison first, maybe um, it's easier to demonstrate. So on the right hand side you see the reference values that are provided with the target. On the left hand side you see the colors that are produced by the camera. And looking at the numeric results, you see the dark green patches here are very close to the original color. And the lighter green it gets or yellowish and reddish in the end the further you are away from the from the reference color and there's different graphical representations for that um, with bars and XY and LAB graphs um, that, that you can use to find out what has happened in the camera after that we have the resolution analysis and with resolution um, we look at different kinds of things like this is a test chart the TE253 with nine Siemens stars sinusoidal Siemens stars and also some slanted edges at different contrast levels and white noise patches and all these have been analyzed by the software already and this for example is the the analysis, the MTF curve derived from the Siemens stars. And you see this is the MTF curve for the central Siemens star and you see the decrease in resolution uh, or in contrast actually at uh, the different frequencies when, it, when you get from the center of the image to the corners. This is the theoretical threshold, so the Nyquist limit. Um, that the camera can reach and this here is the 10% contrast threshold that we typically see as the limiting resolution. All these results are uh, displayed here in that table down here um, and yeah you can also switch to the edge profile so the slanted edges are analyzed um, <coughs> and the results are displayed in a so-called edge profile which basically tells you how the digital value changes over the pixels and you see something like this here is a so-called undershoot that comes from sharpening so there's sharpening applied to that image in the camera that was analyzed. We also get the MTF curve for these slanted edges they look like this and for the white noise stuff we can also analyze a hist histogram actually it's a derivative of the histogram and we can see how much noise suppression is going on by just looking at the shape of this so it should be a Gaussian shape and the further it gets to the uh, to a very very narrow uh, function here close to the um, to the zero value uh, the stronger the noise reduction is in that camera so that's it for now for resolution. We also look at shading, so which basically is the light fall off from the center to the corners. Um, looking at the luminance shading um, in so-called f-stops here. You can also um, present that in y values or l star values. And you can also look at the um, color shading. Um, then we have distortion. Distortion basically is, um, let me show you the image. So this is the image with some crosses spread all over the image and you see the banding of this line here. So there is some distortion that, that we see in that image. Um, and basically what we do is we uh, create a grid from the center crosses in that image. And um, this regular grid, um, is reproduced until the border of that image and you see the deviation of the real position of a cross and the estimated position of the cross 
and that is um, the distortion that we can measure as lens geometric distortion. We have different graphical representations for that, so we have a 2D, 2D uh, representation, and we also have a so-called quiver plot, and also the distortion over the field, and we provide a polynomial um, with that, so if you want to compensate for that, you can use that polynomial to do that. Uh, in that distortion, we also look at the chromatic aberration, so the distance of the position of the crosses for each of the channels. And we also look at the longitudinal chromatic aberration, uh, looking at the center cross and the basic sharpness of um, this cross in the different color channels, green, red, and blue. And you see there's a slight difference here, so there is some longitudinal chromatic aberration present in this image. And finally, we have the histogram that is used to locate defect pixels on black images, gray images, or white images. And you can select the area for the digital values that are OK. And pixels outside that area are so-called outliers and uh, called defect pixels. Um, and the software produces a map of these pixels to enable you to com compensate for them. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching this little video. For further information, please have a look at our website or do not hesitate to contact us if you have further questions. Thank you and bye-bye.